Good morning, everyone. Happy to see you here. Please stand as you are able, and let's join each other in singing, Your Love Awakens Me. You came and broke them down. You broke them down. Bound the chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is strong. singing we're alive cause you're alive you dug me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is great
turn to you. my first mistake of the day. <laughs> let, us, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you have called us into communion at your table, called to get us together as, as siblings. In the light of your love, we see one another as you created us to be, and we long to be the people you created us to become. In the Spirit of Christ, guide us this morning in our worship and our praise of you. In his name we pray, amen. We get to greet each other, so um, uh, welcome, good morning, and uh, let us extend uh, Christ's peace to one another.
Good morning, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A beautiful spring day today. This is, this is what we've been looking forward to. Um, I'm Lisa. Welcome this morning. I'm just going to run through a few announcements that are in the bulletin. Hopefully you picked it up uh, on your way in. And hopefully everybody is getting our e-newsletter. I think they come out Wednesdays now, if I remember correctly. So if you're not getting that, please make sure the church office has your correct email address. And we can get that, you can get on our list so you can have the updated version every week in your uh, mailbox. Uh, going through a, a few things, not, not a whole lot of new stuff, but a couple of things. Everyone's In is back this week after a couple weeks of, uh, of spring break. And we're back this Wednesday from 545 to about 730. They have a meal before we break out into small groups. And we always ask for a $7 donation per person or $25 per family. You can have 10 people in your family. It's a $25 donut. That's pretty good. It's a pretty cheap nowadays. You guys have been to fast food lately, just going through. I mean, it's like 10 or 11 bucks just for a combo meal. Now, it's ridiculous. But I also see that the workers are getting 20 bucks an hour now, too. So that's, I mean, you know, that's, that's the way it works. But uh, it, it's, it's, um, it's good, I guess, for both, both ways. The workers get a little more money. But maybe we can afford to pay that if we're going out to fast food all the time. So it kind of balances out. Anyway, um, everyone's in again this Wednesday. So please check that out if you haven't done that yet. Uh, our call for grant proposals are still, um, that window is still open, but it's closing very quickly. It closes on April 15th, which is a week from tomorrow. So if you have a project you'd like for the foundation to fund that will support this church and this ministry, Please uh, su submit your proposal before the deadline of April 15th. Uh, next Sunday is a Servant Sunday activity that the Being the Church organization is doing. They're going to the uh, Farm Lot 59, and that is from 9 to 11. That's next Sunday. And I believe, I didn't see it in the bulletin, but I got an email about it. Uh, remember that all church picnic that got canceled because of that really weird weather we were having? I saw that it's going to be held now two weeks from today, which is April 21st. I'm going to double check that, but I, I saw that on an email that I received, but I didn't see it in the bulletin. So if you can, maybe hold that window open in the afternoon from like 1 to 3.30. Hopefully more information will be coming out about that. Landscaping team is uh, getting organized. If you haven't had a chance to sign up, scan that QR code. Uh, just again, we've, I'm putting a huge leap in faith of, of our uh, congregation to help support our church campus by volunteers to help maintain the grass and the shrubs and the weeding and the plants. So if you have a couple hours extra of free time on the dates that are listed in the QR code. You can sign yourself up. You can type directly on the document once you open it up. And um, we'd love to see you out there to help out. Uh, a Boy Scout group is going to be helping, which is wonderful. That's They use our campus quite a bit, and they're, they've committed to helping out with the maintenance of our church property. So that's really great. And we're also still looking for some donations. Uh, Lawmower... Um, if you have a weed whacker that's still in good use but you don't use it very often, please consider donating that to this ministry uh, so we can have lots of hands out there working to make sure our campus stays beautiful for everybody. Uh, let me see what else I have. Um, there's one more on the back. Oh, Michael's got something. Other than having a twin a sweater with Morgan. <laughs> Do you notice that Morgan, our singer, these guys had the, like the same different color scheme, but it's like the same sweater. It's pretty crazy. Women's basketball final. Okay, well, I was not going to bring that up because I didn't think that. Anyway, if you are a women's ba or if you're becoming a women's basketball fan, there's a big game on today at 12 o'clock. It's Iowa versus South Carolina. Noon today, all right? And I guess it was uh, the semifinals on Friday was the highest rated game, men or women, in ESPN history. They had over 14 million viewers watching, up to 17 million at peak time. So pretty cool women's sports is, like I said, it's only taken 40 years for, for, for this to finally happen, but I'm excited about it, so that's really great. 
uh, I'm sorry, the Laos announcements on the back of your bulletin. It's uh, the Get on the Bus, uh, May 11th. That's something that our church has always sponsored. This is where we um, help families of women who have been incarcerated, where we um, pay for a bus, uh, tr uh, snacks, uh, just everything they would need to go up to visit their families and come back. So that's something that this church has sponsored for many, many years. If that is something... Oh, for men, too? Uh, not uh, the May. Fourth of May 1. But, but on Father's Day, we do it pretty much. Okay. Every year. That's awesome. So if that's something that you'd like to help pitch some money toward to make sure those families can go see um, uh, their loved ones, uh, there's information about that in the bulletin. And lastly, don't forget to sign in. There's a, an attendance pad in each row. So make sure you sign in so we know that you're here. Thank you. We want to welcome our families. This is a service that makes space for and includes children in worship, and we'd like to have a moment with them if they want to come down and share with me for a moment. And our children at home uh, are welcome to join in. Come on down. No enthusiasm there. <laughs> Hello. Have a seat. <clears throat> One of my favorite songs is When You Wish Upon a Star. You know, from Disneyland, When You Wish Upon a Star. And I, I like it, even though they play it every time Disney shows up on television. They go, that, that, that tune comes up. But I just like w thinking about wishes. Do you, do you have any f wishes? Do you have any favorite wishes? If I gave you a wish today, what would you wish for? Sad wish. That's okay. Wishes that can be sad. Um. <coughs> you want to whisper to me? Oh, okay. She's her, her wish was she, that she'd be able to um, have her her dad and brother together again, and he, with here instead of yeah, gone. And, dad, and your dad's dad. Okay. Right. Those are special people in your life, and wishing to have them around would be something. Oh, you didn't get to see them. That makes it really hard, huh? So they're kind of present in your heart, and your mom and dad can talk about them and tell you stories, I'll bet. Those are special. Yeah, those are great. That's wishes. That's, that's a big wish. That's right on the edge of being a hope, isn't it? See, I think there's a difference between wishes and hopes. Wishes kind of get to their, their goal if something happens, like Pinocchio, he wishes to be a real boy, and when he becomes a real boy, his wish is done. But his life isn't done, is it? It's just really beginning, and that's where hope comes in. Hope is the thing we want to be, and we want to be in relationship with people that are special to us, right? That's our hope, yeah. So there's a little difference between wishes and hope. And we, wishes could come true, but we still have to find out what hope lies beyond that. So let's pray that God can be a part of our, our wishes and our hopes today, okay? Let's pray. <laughs> Loving God, we give you thanks for the love you give us and the power to pursue hope, to trust in you, to hope beyond what we can imagine, to know that you're with us and that you can help us fulfill all the dreams you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, okay. Pastor Erica included a part of the service that I didn't always include, uh, or I included a little later, which is to give you a little background on the scripture before it's read. And so I'm going to give you a little background on the scripture this morning. <clears throat> uh, in the previous, last week, we dealt with the gospel of Luke, and we looked at uh, the empty tomb story, right? That the three women are at the empty tomb in Luke, and then they run and they tell Peter and the beloved disciple, and they come to the empty tomb. This week, we're reading John. And so we're looking at John's understanding, and what happens before this passage is Mary alone, not the three, but Mary alone, shows up at the tomb, and it's empty. And she's taken 
aback by this, she runs and tells Peter and the beloved disciple, um, who's always hinted at being John, the writer of the book. So it's really funny writing a book about yourself and going, I'm the beloved disciple. Because <laughs> you couldn't say me, John. So, and it, and it probably wasn't John, the, the disciple, anyway. But uh, they come and they see the empty tomb, right? And they, they go away amazed. And then Mary has an experience of the risen Christ, okay? That's, that's what takes place before we get to this part of the chapter. And what I want you to look for are three things. I know Erica teased about a three-point sermon um, and five stories, right? I don't have the stories, but I do have the three points. So the first thing I want you to look for is uh, in that room, uh, what is the assignment given to the disciples? It's a little odd setting, but what is the assignment? In the second part, um, what is, who, is Jesus, who is John and Jesus speaking to? Okay, who's, who's the audience um, that John's speaking to? Listen for that. And then the third one, uh, what is the point of all this? Okay, the third movement carries the purpose. What is this all leading to? Okay, so those are things I want you to listen for. All right. Here's our prayer, please. Resurrection, resurrected God, though we have hidden ourselves in a locked room and huddled together as one who builds barriers, send your living word through our locked doors and into our guarded hearts that we might be witnesses of your grace and couriers of your goodness. By the power of your Holy Spirit, grant us the trust to believe the gospel not because we see it, but because we have seen it and transformed through it. Amen. Your scripture reading today is John 20, 19 through 31. <clears throat> when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins, sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in his presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is, Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Probably should have put a marker between the three movements so you can go, are we in the second movement or the third movement now? <laughs> One of the things I've been doing since I retired was lear is learning how to play the cello. Uh, it's been a, been a lot of fun. 
um, and, and a challenge, um, particularly for Trisha, who has to listen through, to me going through all of the squeaky squawky motions of learning how to play a stringed instrument with a bow. Um, by the way, I play guitar and left hand, I, okay, I got this, but the bow, like, whoa, what, who, who invented this <laughs> means of, uh, of punishment? You know, it's just very challenging. I have a small chamber group that I, I got in touch with and have been playing with, so that's fun. We actually perform here three times a year at the Los Altos. Um, so it's a lot of fun. During COVID, the local city college, uh, all, the, all the musicians kind of went into the woodworks, and after they were, they tried to pull back the, the orchestra at uh, Long Beach City College, but they, they couldn't get any cellos, or couldn't get enough cellos. So they put out a call for cellos, and I'm going, I know they're playing way over my head, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm now playing with this city uh, orchestra, and the uh, director, Roger, has all these words because it's a class in a college, so they have to teach stuff. So he's always stopping the rehearsal, um, which I love, to teach us stuff. And one of the things he teaches us is the way to know, know a song and learn a song, so we're going to start rehearsing one, is he says, we start at the end, because you're all ready to jump into, dive into the beginning, right? But he goes, no, we're going to start at the end, because I want you to know where you're headed, I want, want you to know that towards which your, the music leads. If you don't understand that, you won't understand the beginning. So if you understand the ending and see where it's going, you go, oh, there's where the themes all wind up. I realized that as I'm looking at this passage this morning, that we need to start at the end in order to know where it's come from and where it's, where, what it leads to. And so we're going to start with this last part um, which sets out the purpose, not only of the resurrection, but of the whole book of John. And he just it says it, and it includes two of the most important words, words you should always pay attention when they come in the Bible. So that. Because everything before the so that is kind of prelude. It's leading it up. But when they say so that, oh, now I know what you're aiming at, right? And this so that is so that you might have life. That's the whole purpose. I can stop now and go home and you can go, okay, the purpose of, of Jesus and the resurrection is so we, that we might have life and we'd be done. That would be enough. But we really kind of need to understand what this means, what this life means. Now, in, with our th present theology, you might expect Jesus to have said, uh, John, to have said something different. You might have said, so that you might be saved from sin, right? That's a that's language we use. But John doesn't use that language. It says, you, uh, we might expect, given the theology of our day, to say, uh, so that you can get your ticket for heaven, right? Uh, just check that off. Now, it may have a heavenly dimensions, but that's not what John's saying either. Uh, and with our present th theology that runs around in the, in the community, you might also expect a, an answer like, uh, so that... You can be forgiven, and God can love you again. That's really bad theology, but it's what we might expect, right, that that, that that would be said. But no, he says that you might have life. Now, John has two words he uses for life in his gospel. One is tsuke, which means physical life, right? It's, it's here, it's now, it's located, physical life. And zoe which is life with eternal dimensions. Life that is, not, that is now, but it's also not yet. And it's here, but it's also to be. That's the way that John is talking about. And this life is a constant theme in the book of John. Go right back to the very first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and without God, nothing came into being, and what came into being, and, and uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? And what came to being in Him was Zoe, life. Life comes into being through God's creative Word. And it's not just that God creates at the beginning. It's that there is a creative, transformative spirit that is continuous, that happens again and again, life finding its way. So whenever life hits dead ends, like slavery in Egypt, the creative, transforming spirit of God finds a new way for life to continue. In exile, they're trapped. 
and God finds a new way to call the people forward. And in a tomb, God finds a new way. A creative transformation continues to flow out. It repeats in, in the halfway through, John, in the story of uh, the good shepherd. He says, the good shepherd comes that you might have life. And I love this phrase. You might have life and have it abundantly. Isn't that a great word? Abundant life. It's zoe. This is what John is talking about, that we are able to participate in this creative process. That's the goal towards which everything else moves, is that we can participate in that creative spirit, that transformative, consistent, ongoing movement of life and the power of God. So how do we access that? Well, let's wander back through the reading this morning to that second uh, portion. Uh, we find there Thomas, right? And Thomas wasn't there for all the hubbub that goes beyond. And he arrives in this room, and the disciples are all telling him this unimaginable story. Guess who was just here, right? And I, if I were Thomas, I'd be going, how much did you guys have to drink last night, right? Or for the next generation, James, do you, are you baking brownies again? <laughs> or for the most recent generation, Thaddeus, did you leave the, the chewables out? <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's, weird. it's off the wall story. And so Thomas says, I won't believe that until I see the holes in his hands and the, the wound in his side. Now, we, it doesn't say immediately, but soon after that, Jesus appears. And once, his ident once uh, Thomas can see his hands and his side, he falls on his knees and he says, My Lord and my God. Now comes the point. This, this story is, is kind of re recapping a little bit of what happens. But now comes the part about who's this written for? Right? Jesus says, Do you say this because you have seen me with your eyes? And that's tsuke, right? The physical world. He sees physically what, what Jesus, you know, that's, that's the level at which Thomas is responding. Blessed are those who have, will not, do not see and yet believe. Those who do not see and yet believe. Because they believe with their hearts. That's tsoe. That's life. So instead of seeing is believing, believing is seeing. This is written because by John's time, there is not a living disciple, a living eyewitness to Jesus. So that everybody who comes to faith after that has to do it by faith, right? It, they aren't doing it by their eyesight. Believing is a really challenging understanding, but it is that we, vehicle that gives us access to the creative transformation, we sometimes hunker down and think of believing as a belief, as a thing, okay? I have these beliefs about Jesus. But believe, believing is a word, verb, not a noun. Believing is entrusting ourselves to. It is being captivated by a vision, an image. It is being founded and relying on and trusting in belief, even in, in the dark moments. One of my favorite icons of believing comes from Ted Lasso, right? Okay, so you see, there are enough people who know Ted Lasso, but it, Ted Lasso is the story of an American football coach who decides, uh, and for a lot of reasons, to go to, to England to coach soccer, which he doesn't understand at all, but Beard, his assistant, does, and so he helps him out. What he does understand is people and how to motivate how to build a community, how to liberate gifts within that community. That's what he understands. And when he arrives, he writes this, the, uh, this, this word, believe, on yellow paper and posts it over his office. And everybody on the team is looking at him like, yeah, yeah, we're going to believe in ourselves. Because they're a team who hasn't won. They haven't done well. Um, and they don't quite get this. But the more and more they live together, the more and more that Ted Lasso spends his magic around them in terms of understanding and seeking the best for one another and liberating their own gifts and talents, the more that belief sign takes on power and meaning. 
so, so much so that one of the staff becomes disaffected from the, the community. He takes the sign down and rips it into pieces and leaves. I'll, I'll fast forward. I won't give you the whole three, four seasons of, of <laughs> Tleso. But he comes back in a moment of redemption, finds the pieces of that sign, tapes them together, and reposts them above the doorway. For me, that torn up, crunched up image of believe reflects what believing's about. Doubting Thomas is doubting because there's a sense in which we have to go through challenging times. We go through times when, when relationships fail or falter and they get crunched up and ripped up. And it's when they're taped together that we find new possibilities and new life. There are dreams that we might have once have had and, 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 and entailed that, that I'm looking forward to being that that don't find fruition, that fade away. And in those dark moments, it is the tattered believing, trusting that the creative, transforming process is not finished, that there's something new. There was a career we were going to pursue that fails, but somehow through the grace of God and that creative, transformative spirit, New possibilities emerge. It is believing that liberates and activates that trust. Sometimes I think we want to put lip, a, a sign of, of belief in, on a really nice vellum paper behind a glass uh, frame and mount it on the wall so we can say, I believe, right? I have a concept about this. But that's not what believing looks like or is lived like. So where is the impetus to need to move forward? Well, we have to wander back through this story, just one more uh, section, and go into that room that is locked, right? Into that room is safeguarded. Uh, unfortunately, John lives in a time and uses language which now has caused so much damage when he says, for fear of the Jews, right? And you can't read this passage without wincing a little bit when you get to that, and we should. Because what John is intending to speak to is the authorities, the religious authorities, the power brokers of his day. They were afraid of those people. They weren't afraid of the Jewish people, which has been twisted and turned into Holocaust camps and modern-day marches where they won't replace us. So we have to make sure we confess that when we read this passage. But more than locking out people... The disciples in that room are also locked in. They are locked into their failure, right? Their disappointment, their fear, their uncertainty. The creative transforming process has ended for them. Jesus has died. So when Jesus appears in the room, this is shocking, right? Okay, they've seen it. And about an empty tomb, but not appearing in the room. So after some moment of ID verification, right? I don't know if they make, they put their, their, their print on their, their, you know, iPad or whatever, but, uh, or face recognition. I don't know. It's actually it's side and hand recognition, right, for Jesus. After a few moments, Jesus repeats his shalom, his peace greeting. And then he says, that for me, something that seems odd. As the Father has sent me, I send you. Now, I've just discovered that Jesus is out of the tomb and standing in front of me, and he gives me an assignment? What's that? You know, what? What that means is you're stuck in the past. I'm giving you an assignment because the transforming creative power of God is alive. It's transforming this moment. It's changing this experience of devastation. It's that presence, that recognition of zoe, of life, that is re-emerging, that calls us together, that calls us to believing and trusting in something new that's beyond our imaginations so that we might have life and have it abundantly. If we remain stuck in that upper room, which a lot of people do. They, they never leave the after room. They get the news. Grace is alive. I'm okay. Thank God's going on, and I'm staying here, right? We don't get that sense of calling. I like the way Richard Rohr puts it. And so we hoard it. 
spirit, love, to ourselves. We hoard grace. We hoard mercy. We don't allow ourselves to be conduits through which it pours into the world. Truly, the only way we can hold on to grace, mercy, love, joy, any spiritual gift is to give them away consciously and intentionally. Once we stop acting as a conduit, we lose them ourselves. That's why there are so many sad, bitter, and angry people. Disconnected from God, we choose death. Jesus, sending us, invites us to choose life, to be conduits for life, to be vehicles by which God's love and grace re-enters the world, by which people's sense of being broken and wounded and finished finds revival and renewal. Now, Pastor Erica would be uh, disappointed if I didn't give you homework. <laughs> I, I've, I've been enough worship services, know I've always got homework when I, when I leave. So the first, I have two, two parts. You can choose one or the other or both. Um, where have you been at a dead end and experienced God's life-giving, renewal, creative, transformative spirit? And the second one is, how might God be inviting you now to be a conduit for that life? I was recently listening to Mahler's Requiem. Not that I'm always listening to Requiems, but I, I hadn't heard his before, so I listened. I go, what is the text? You know, it's all in Latin. So it's like, I don't know what they're, what they're saying. Uh, besides Requiem Eternum, that's it. That's like, I got that far. These are the words from Mahler's Requiem I leave you with. Oh, believe my heart, oh, believe. Nothing will be lost to you. Everything is yours that you have desired, yours what you have loved, what you are struggling for, oh, believe. You were not born in vain, have not lived in vain, suffered in vain. What was, what is, was created must perish. What has perished must rise again. Tremble no more. Prepare yourselves to live. Amen.
One of the ways we sing of God's love forever is to offer ourselves and as conduits to get to that love and as resources to the community that surrounds us. We share our uh, gifts and offerings to God now that we might uh, extend that and be a conduit of God's love in the world. You are more than enough. 
I like that we have now added a new ritual to communion, which is the ritual of cleansing. There is a sung response in the great thanksgiving, but other, and you will, uh, what's uh, on the screen is correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So let us offer our thanks to God over this food that God has prepared for us and the life that it represents. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joy, joyful to give thanks to you in every place and in every moment. You created the world full of beauty and abundance, and you formed us in your image, filling us with your breath of life so that we might experience the joys of being in relationship with you and with each other. When our love for you and one another falls short, you still love us. So when with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise the uniting spirit of love. Singing. Huh. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This is our first time doing something like this, so we're going to keep it going. Here we go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor. All of the praise, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He broke down barriers and kept keep people from know that kept people from knowing one and loving one another he reached out to all those who were cast out of society and proclaimed through his very life the ex extent of this new world as it is being revealed over all the earth on the night in which he was to give himself for us he took the uh, and the, for the world he shared a final meal with his closest friends he took bread gave thanks for it then broke it and gave it to his disciples take this and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this and remember me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and drink. This is a sign of the new covenant between God and the world. Do this every time you drink it and remember me. And we remember Jesus. We remember that through the power of his resurrection, we are always formed anew into his body with siblings in Christ around the world. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus, we offer ourselves and our praise and our thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of Christ's companionship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup, so that as we share them, we may experience the power of Christ, power to make us his body here in this community of faith and with others throughout the world, united in love, mission, and ministry, until the glorious day when all barriers are, will be broken and your love will reign in every heart through the Spirit. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. And as children of God, let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
double fist at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at his table. rise as you are able as we offer our thanks after this gift from God and then join in singing together. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you feed us through the gift and light life of Jesus. You feed us at Christ's table. You feed us in this company of friends and family. You nourish us in your creative spirit. Guide us forward that we might know life and know it abundantly. In the spirit of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Start again, Creator. 
Oh, sing a song of hope, sing along. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Just to know that you are near is enough. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Oh, sing a song of hope, sing along. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Just to know that you are near. As we go forward from this place, may we hold high our tattered believe signs, torn up, shredded up, messed up as they are, for the world to see that we might be conduits of God's love. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, sing a song of hope, sing along. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Just to know that you are near is enough. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Right here, so you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>